we are reading the design of computer instruction set and the CPU. In the last class, we have uh, seen that how the computer instruction set can be designed and the reduced instruction set uh, machines than uh, the current state of the art actually the all the machines nowadays are reduced instruction set. So, how are the instruction set are selected, how it can be designed, how it is the, the what are the hardware implementation of it that already we have read. Today we will start discussion on the uh, design of CPU and first we will see the um, design of ALU in this class. So, CPU contains three elements, the resistors, the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit or CU. Now, already when we have uh, discussed, we read the uh, different type of resistor designs, there we have seen the how ship resistors can be designed using flip flops. The barrel shifter or what we can tell that a this is actually a uh, more than 1 bit transfer that called the barrel shifter, the 4 by 4 or 8 by 8 barrel shifter, 16 by 16, how they can be designed already we have read that part. Now, the arithmetic logic units as it name implies the arithmetic units. So, it has actually two parts, one is the ALU design, the arithmetic unit and arithmetic unit and the logic unit. Now, the ALU design means the combination of two, the arithmetic unit and the logic unit how they can be combined to form a ALU, whether it is a low scale, whether it is a upper scale ALU or larger ALU can be designed that we will read in this class. Now, the arithmetic unit means the different types of adders, multipliers, subtractors actually all type of arithmetic operation uh, the unit does. And earlier classes we have read different types of adders, the ripple carry adder normal, carry look ahead adder, carry save adder, the wall tree adder. Similarly, for multipliers we have seen the normal multiplier, the booths multiplier, the first multiplier the array multiplier, different type of multipliers we have already read. So, actually arithmetic unit, how they it can be designed already we have read. Now, the logic units are nothing but our logic gates, it can be a simply one gate and or not NAND or the combination of and or not gates. Or in one word we can tell we have read the boolean equations or how the logic uh, outputs or the outputs can be generated from the combination of logic gets. So, already we have read this part also. So, basically the uh, different units of ALU means the arithmetic unit, the logic unit, how they can be designed already we have read. Today we will read that how the using these uh, different units, the arithmetic and logic units, how the ALU can be designed. And then the other part the, of the CPU is the control unit, that, that also we will read later. So, we start the ALU design. An ALU can be divided into two segments, two segments just now we have seen 
the arithmetic unit and the logic unit. Now, arithmetic unit performs operations, arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, increment by 1, decrement by 1, etcetera. Now, the operations obviously, it operates on some operands and these operands can be of type signed or unsigned. Say binary coded decimal numbers or BCD numbers we read early, floating point numbers. So, the different arithmetic units <coughs> can be designed based on the uh, type of operands. So, some floating point unit or some uh, um, if operands are BCD numbers or so simple signed or unsigned binary numbers. And logical unit performs and or not on these logical operations. Now, first we see the design of arithmetic unit. We know the all the um, units or the, the different type of adders multipliers, subtractors that all of which already we did. Now, I am considering a two function arithmetic unit which generate addition and subtraction. So, here the key element is a 4 bit parallel adder and as the module does the addition or subtraction. So, for that we need one multiplexers. So, it selects either <coughs> selects either addition either addition or subtraction. So, one multiplexer is needed for that. Now, <coughs> say the se S is the select line of the multiplier, S is the select line. So, my design is such that if S equal to 0, then the it the output function is F equal to x plus y that means, it is a addition it is a addition. Else, f equal to x plus y bar comp y complement plus 1 that means, this is the 2's complement subtraction that means, x minus y. So, if it is if s equal to 1 if s equal to else means, if s equal to 1 select is 1 then it is a minus. So, this is a simple logic say I have I have a adder I have a adder all already we have seen how the adder can be designed say I have a subtractor I have a subtractor now this is a multiplexer it has some select line say adder goes to 0 line subtractor goes to 1 line. So, if s equal to 0 it will the adder is passed as a output. So, this is a f is a addition. If s equal to 1, say s equal to 1, then this value will be 
passed. And then f is a f is a subtraction. So, this is a one uh, simple design which does the either addition or subtraction together. So, we are calling this is a two function arithmetic unit. Now, if we see the uh, design, say this is a This is say this is a 4 bit parallel ladder. This is a 4 bit parallel ladder. So, see it has uh, 4, 4 bit. So, these are x 0, these are my x. This is x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 and these are my y lines. So, this is y 0, y 1, y 2, y 3. Now, notice here we have given 4 multiplexers here and the inputs are either y 0 or y 0 complement. Similarly, either y 1, y 1 complement, y 2, y 2 complement, y 3, y 3 complement. <coughs> now, the select lines say so this is the this is the select lines say so select lines select s <coughs> now if if s is 0 if s is 0 then y 0 y 1 y 2 y 3 uncomplemented values of y's are selected and as if these these are generating the output the say four output bits the t 0, t 1, t 2 and t 3. So, these are my function f. So, f is a addition. Now, if if s equal to 1, then the if select line is 1, then actually these all the complemented values of y, y 0 bar, y 1 bar, y 2 bar and y 3 bar will be selected. And then the function will be that x 0, x 1, x 2, x 3 and it will be added with y 0 bar, y 1 bar, y 2 bar, y 3 bar. So, actually this is a subtraction. So, what we can tell that this is my C and here is a C out. So, using 4 multiplexers with one select line that means um, 2 to 1 marks 4 to 2 to 1 marks that 
one four bit parallel ladder as well as a one subtractor four bit subtractor can be designed in this way. Now, we see a uh, two function logic. Earlier we have seen a, uh, a, a two function arithmetic unit. Now, we see a two function logic, logic unit. See in the example, last example, if s equal to 0, then it was a and. If s equal to 1, then it was a subtract. Now, we are taking, we are designing a logic that if s equal to 0, that means select line of the multiplexer is 0, then the function g is x and y, else the function is x, x or y, either it is doing and or it is doing a x or not and or can also be derived by the following boolean identities. Means, using this x or and and, because the if it is 1 x or x, we know the x or function, say if it is uh, a x or b, a x or b, we know the truth table of this thing is actually function is a b bar plus a bar b so 1 x or x 1 x or x means 1 and x bar plus 1 bar dot x. Now, this is nothing but x bar plus 1 bar is 0. So, this question will this is ended with 0 means nothing will be there. So, this is a x bar. So, that is written here that 1 x or x is nothing but a complemented value that is a not. So, not is not can be uh, designed using x or. Similarly, x or y is nothing but x x or y x or x y. So, again using the x or logic another another level of x or. So, again what we can tell that if I have I I know or I can design a say this is a a x or b then we can do that x x or y and then it can be say it is a c equal to x x or y and d equal to x and y, then g equal to c x or d will give the c or x or y. will give x or y. So, that x or y is x, x or y, x or x y. So, actually x, x or y that we have written as a, we have written as a c and then c x or and the x y is written as a d, then this is c x or y is nothing but x or y. So, actually if we can realize and and x or then using these two logic not and or can also be designed. So, 
So, this 4 bit 2 function logic unit that we can give that if it again this is a 4 bit. So, outputs are x 0, y 0, then it is the and is fed to the 0 input of the multiplexer and the x 1 goes to 1, x 1 y 1, x 2 y 2, x 3 y 3, the 4, the 4 bit value. Now, it has one similarly the marks are that select lines s. So, if s is 0, if s equal to s equal to 0, the 0 bit of the 0 input of the marks will be selected and it will be. So, x 0 y 0, x 1 y 1, x 2 y 2, x 3 y 3. So, actually this is x and y. Say g equal to x and y. So, we are getting z 0, z 1, z 2, z 3. Now, if it is if s equal to 1, if s equal to 1, then the XOR, XOR will be selected, output of XOR will be selected. So, that means, it will be X, XOR, Y, then G will be X, XOR, Y. So, again it is a uh, two function logic units. In this way, using the multiplexers, we can always design a two function logic unit. So, we know that it is a the multiplexer is a 2 to 1 multiplexer, the select line is 1 then it is a 2. Similarly, we can uh, the already we have read the how the um, bigger multiplexer can be designed and sim, uh, if, we, if we have a 4 function, if we have a 4 function uh, logic units or 4 function arithmetic units we need, then actually the way what we can do, we can take a multiplexers which have 4 input lines, 2 select lines, and the accordingly that particular output can be selected. These are my input lines and here this what we can do that here this can be a this red box this can be a logic unit or this can be a arithmetic unit. Now, as already we have read that instead of a larger marks, what we can do? We can design a larger marks multiplexers using smaller number of uh, small marks multiplexers or 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 in, in more number of uh, small multiplexers. So, in that way also we can uh, do this or we can design this logic unit and arithmetic units uh, using the multiplexers. Now, we can combine the outputs generated by the arithmetic and logic units. As the 
ANU uh, consists the uh, ANU is has two parts. One is arithmetic unit and the logic unit. And just now what we have done the two way um, or two function arithmetic units and um, add and subtract we have designed two function logic unit and and x y we have designed. If the output of the arithmetic unit that we can define as T 0, T 1, T 2, T 3, our A u outputs and the logic units are Z 0, G 1, G 2, G 3, then again another steps what we can do the we can combine the logic unit outputs and arithmetic unit outputs together by using some multiplexers. So, what we can do now say the T 0 T 0, T 1, T 2, T 3, the output of the um, arithmetic units come to that first line, the 0 at line. Similarly, the Z 0, Z 1, Z 2, Z 3 comes to the multi other multiplexer input. And as usual, it has some select lines. It has the select lines S. Now, if S equal to 0, then say so these are my Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3. So, if S equal to 0, the Z is actually the arithmetic units. If S equal to 1, the Z is output is the output of logic units. So, in this way we can combine the arithmetic and logic units again using another level of multiplexers. So, if we see the uh, schematic representation whatever be the um, unit just as an example we have seen very small two function uh, arithmetic units addition and subtraction and two function logic units the add and the XOR. Now, uh, it can be any complex arithmetic functions, it can be any complex logic unit functions. Uh, we are combine, we want to combine these together. So, this is a schematic representation of four functions so this x is a four bit bus y is also 4 bit and this is arithmetic unit 
again the output is 4 bit bus this is a f it goes to the multiplexers 0 line. Then the logic unit again this is a 4 bit and it has 2 select lines because it has a 2 levels of multiplexers. So, this is S0 select lines S0 and S1. So, actually the S0 lines it will select whether arithmetic units we need we need arithmetic functions or we need logic functions. And then S 1 if S 1 is selected then which output will be we, we, we want say arithmetic unit or we want that logic unit as the output functions again this will be the 4 bit. So, this is the overall schematic representation. See here the uh, select lines are this is a 2 bit and the multi 2 levels of multiplexers are there. Here is actually S 0 selects which type of arithmetic unit because it all are two function arithmetic unit or two function logic unit. So, S 0 selects which function will select and S 1 selects that which unit to be uh, outputted arithmetic or logic. So, this is the schematic representation. So, if we see the truth table controlling the operation of this ALU, so this is a truth table. So, I have I have two uh, uh, arithmetic or my arithmetic unit consists two functions, one is addition one is addition another is subtraction the two is complemented subtraction. So, if see my S 1 is 0 because this is a second level mark selection S 1 is the second level mark selection. So, this becomes 0. Now, if S 0 is 0 addition is selected if S 0 is 1 the 2 is complement subtraction is selected. Now, that means that uh, the, these two are my these two are my arithmetic arithmetic units. So, if S 1 is 0 always arithmetic unit is selected as the output that means, Z is the output of arithmetic units and if S 0 is 0 then it will be addition, if S 0 is 1 then it will be 2's complement subtraction. Now, the second level marks if it is a 1 then obviously, logic units are selected. So, these are my logic units and these are a boolean and and a xor. So, if it is 0 again if s 0 is 0 this is a x and y if s 0 is 1 then this is a x x or y. So, in this way we can the truth table this is the truth table for controlling the ALU operations. So, so far what we have seen now if we uh, draw the uh, 
the schematic diagram say a 1 bit ALU which perform AND OR and ADD. That means, I am taking the logic operations as AND and OR, logic operations as AND and OR and always the this is the one function only this is my arithmetic the addition arithmetic addition. So, uh, what it has two input if it is the two input functions the a and b then one and is there this is my this is my and this is my or and the output goes to this as the input of the marks. And this is one bit full adder. So, it has two inputs a b and another input is carry in and the output goes to the uh, input to the marks. So, it has some marks as the some select lines select lines and accordingly the output will be or the, the particular input will be selected as the um, output of the multiplexer. So, these we can tell the schematic of a 1 bit ALU. Now, say uh, the um, full bit um, for the full adder, this is the logic diagrams for carry out and sum. Already we have several times we have read, we have the design of uh, adders, the design of full adder and we know that this is the, a, if a b are the two inputs and another is the carry in say c, then we know that a b plus b c plus c a that is my a b plus b c plus c a is my carry out. So, this is a simple logic diagram. Similarly, the sum is nothing but a x or b x or c for the full adder. So, if this is my a and this is my b 2 inputs, this is my carry in c, then this is sum is a x or b x or c. So, these are the uh, logic diagrams. So, uh, design trick is solve part of the problem and extend. That means, first one bit full adder is designed. This one bit full adder is designed. It has two parts, the carry and sum just now we have seen we have designed and then the other logics the one and get and one and get and one all get that we can do and then the multiplexers it can it is fed to the and or add and it is fed to the multiplexers and depending on the select lines the particular uh, function will be selected whether it is arithmetic whether it is a particular type of uh, logic unit and or or. So, one bit ALU with the logic functions and and or and the arithmetic function as one bit full adder can be designed. This is my one bit full ALU. Now, if I want a four bit ALU, so we have to add four such one bit ALU and this is the diagram for that. So, now it is a 0 b 0. So, this as if this is 1 bit ALU the block diagram is this is 1 1 bit ALU. So, it has two inputs a 0 b 0 carry in another input and the output is say I am giving result 0 because I do not know 
whether it is a logic functions, whether it is a arithmetic functions. And then the carry in because it if it is addition then this carry will go as the input carry of the second ALU. So, this is again another 1 bit ALU and similarly the another another carrying through will propagate. another 1 bit ALU in that way in this case if it is a 4 bit ALU 4 such 1 bit ALU are concatenated or appended with the the previous carry out as the carry in of the next ALU and it will be designed like that. So, this is a uh, general schematic for n bit ALU. Now, we see how subtraction can be done. Already we have seen the, uh, the adder, the adder can be used as a subtractor. Say a minus b is that nothing but a plus of minus b, you know. So, two's complement take the inverse of every bit and add 1. This is we know that this is the two's complement meaning. So, b twice inverse of b that we have earlier example we have denoted as negation of b or b complemented and then minus a plus b means minus a plus negation of b plus 1 because inverse of every bit and add 1 this means the two's complement. So, a plus negation of b plus 1 is a plus a plus if we consider this is as a negation of b plus 1 means b complemented plus 1 and b complemented plus 1 is nothing but a minus b. So, this is a plus minus b means a minus b. So, in this way we can that means from the uh, taking the inverse of every bit or complement of every bit we can do the subtraction already we have done that in this way we can do the subtraction. So, what will be the ALU for that? See that again we have taking a multiplexes and this is actually the select line. This is a this is the select or you can tell this is the select line. So, if it is 0, then normal b uncomplemented b will go, but if it is select line is 1, then actually b complement is the implement. That means, every bit of b, if it is a n bit of um, n bit b, then every bit of individual bit is complemented and that will be given as the input of a multiplexer. So, actually it will go to the output. So, this is a if it is a 4 bit then the 4 bit inverse of every 4 bit will get here. And so, this is my arithmetic logic units say it is a subtraction. So, uh, here um, the 4 bit a values will go here and the 4 bit be complemented values and if the arithmetic unit is selected by this select line or that carrying then actually that the subtraction will be um, done at the output of this particular ALU and here is the carry out. 
So, in this way individually the subtraction we can see. So, the subtraction if the subtraction is the um, is the arithmetic unit then using 1 bit full adder and we can do this thing. So, this is my the two inputs A and B. Then say A is A comes as it is to the full input of the full bit error, but here B is inverted, B is not. This is nothing but 1, 1 XOR, 1 XOR. B. So, this is 1 XOR B means B complement. or not as already we have seen that um, B bar or B complement we can write as 1 XOR B. So, B complement is added to the full bit adder and if that is selected then this particular it will this particular adder will be actually a subtractor whose complement whose complement subtractor. Now, say we, we have taken the 2 ALU and actually we are considering the overflow. So, if it is a 32 bit A is a 32 bit B is a 32 bit and we are taking that 32 such ALUs that 1 bit ALU we have kept here. So, A 0 to A 31. So, here some more ALUs are there A 0 to A 31 similarly B 0 to B 31 are fed and these are the select lines S 0 to S 31 and it produce that the combinational logics to produce select compare the carry in etcetera. So, uh, how the overflow can be detected? Because whenever it is the addition or even subtraction, the overflow can be there. See that if we have the decimal values that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, these are my binary values, it is a 4 bit representation. Now, for these decimal values, this is a 2's complement representation. So, these are for negative numbers, this is 4 bit 2's complement representation. Now, say we want to add 7 plus 3, 7 plus 3 is 10, see if we see the 7 plus 3 is 10, but here if we add 7 plus 3 it, it gives that minus 6, that means when two positive numbers sum of two positive numbers the result is a negative number then actually the overflow occurs. Similarly, here minus 4 and minus 5. So, this is minus 4 is 1100 whose complement representation minus 5 is 1011. 
Now, if we add these two, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 0 is 1, 1 1 0, this is carry 1. Now, see minus 4, minus 5, if we add, we are getting a 7, we are getting a 7 and that is a positive number. So, if the result is result or the sum of two negative numbers is a positive numbers, then overflow occurs. Similarly, here it is a uh, negative numbers minus 6. So, how we can detect the overflow? The result is too large or too small to represent properly and example is just now we have seen. When adding operands with different signs, overflow cannot occur. Now, overflow occurs when the two positive numbers is a very important thing that two positive numbers and the sum is negative or the other case is two negative numbers and the sum is positive. So, just now we have seen the two examples of each of the cases, each of the cases. So, how we can detect the overflow? These are the two cases that um, this is two positive numbers uh, 7, 7 and 3 two positive numbers and the sum is negative, two positive numbers and the sum is negative. Here two negative numbers and the sum is positive. So, both the cases the overflow occurs. Now, how we can detect? So, this is overflow detection. So, if x y is 0 0 then x x or y is 0 this is my x or uh, truth table. Now, this is actually that uh, 1 bit ALU. So, I have taken a 4 bit. So, if it is a, I have taken a 0 b 0, a 1 b 1, a 2 b 2, a 3 b 3 and these are my carry in 1, carry in 2, carry in 3. So, now the carry in 3 and carry out 3 if we take the exhaust of these two carrying 3 and carry out 3 and we take the exhaust then this will detect the it will detect the overflow. So, this is the overflow detection logic. Now, zero detection logic. So, zero detection logic is just a one big nor gate any non-zero input to the NOR gate will cause its output to be 0, because NOR is complement of OR, OR is that if any one at least if, if um, one bit is uh, one input is one then it will be output will be one. So, NOR is that if uh, one bit is one this is my this is actually my NOR gate. So, if any one is 1 then it will be a 0. So, that logic we can use for a 0 detection. So, again if you use a 1 bit ALU just there are 4 bit uh, ALU A 0 B 0 A 1 B 1 is given and the 4 outputs the result four results are this is simply a simply a nor get this is simply a uh, a nor get
so you at 0 at the output gives a, a 0 detection. So, if we uh, do the summary of the LU design process that there are two uh, concept main concepts one is define and conquer that means formulate a solution in terms of simpler components. So, if it is a LU means either arithmetic units or logic units that first will be designed using gates or, uh, or simple gates. Then design each of the components or sub problems and generate and test. So, given a collection of building blocks look for ways of putting them together that meets uh, the requirement. So, these are the two fundamentals or the two basic concepts for the ALU design process. Now, the today's quiz question is that one simple ALU design, the design an ALU to perform the following functions. So, again here we have taken the uh, two, two function arithmetic units and two function logic units. So, if uh, the select lines are 0, 0, it will be addition if it is 0 1 it will be a subtraction if it is 1 0 it will be a simple and if it is 1 1 it is a a or b so design an alu so that it perform this arithmetic logic units this is the quiz questions of this so today we have seen the arithmetic logic unit design and next day we will continue the control unit design We are discussing the design of a CPU. In the last class, uh, we have read the design of uh, arithmetic logic unit, the ALU, and today we will read the design of control unit. Control unit, as its name implies, actually it is the unit of mastering the interfaces of all other units of a CPU. So, first we see that what is the function of control unit. So, control unit translates or decodes instructions and generate appropriate signals to accomplish the desired operations. So, we have read the uh, design of instruction set there uh, 